Okay, um, quick one today. I've got this toast rack here, which is one I've worked on previously, uh, the toast rack composite mod video, I'll put a link in the description. And it's come back to me because it's suffering crashes. So if I give you an example, I load Adam's family from this ZXC4 ROM. And just as a note, this is only happening once the machine is warmed up, which is a clue. And I can play the game, um, running around, jumping about. It works fine. I can press any keys I like. Um, this key up here, uh, it fills me. It looks like it's crashing, but it's not. It's just like kind of a pause and I can step through, so... I'll reset the game. And continue showing that when the game's running, I can press any load of keys I want all together. With the exception of keys like space, M, N, and B, these ones, and combinations of other keys, including these ones, I also crash it. It hasn't crashed yet. Dying seems to make the game crash more readily. Okay, we've crashed. I'm going to show one more time. I'll press space and N and M and these buttons. Now, let me just show you. If I die, the game still works. If I die and I'm pressing these buttons, we've crashed it's gone. And it can crash quite spectacularly. Um, I'll show you with Dizzy, loaded from the Dandinator. Interesting, this only seems to happen when the game's kind of running. If I try it on the title screen, it won't crash. But again, I can press all these keys, any keys I like, all together. Everything fine, but if I press any combinations of these keys down here, it crashes. These keys are all associated, I'll show you on the keyboard schematic, they're all associated with address line A15. So I'm going to do a little digging around A15, see what it's connected to. Maybe we can find a troublesome component. Hi, it's Mr. Voice over here. Um, as promised, he's a keyboard schematic. And as you can see, this column for A15, which contains B, N, M, symbol shift and space, seems to be the column which is causing the issue with this machine. And I did replace diode D8 there at the top, it didn't seem to make any difference. We still got these annoying crashes. So as I was investigating, I thought, well let's probe the data bus and see what's happening, see what happens to it while we start pressing keys. But I didn't really even get that far. If you take a look here, I'm filming the screen simultaneously. When I probe the RAM chips towards the right hand side of the PCB, we're going to see that the game crashes just like when we had the interference with those key presses. There it goes, it's gone. Now this particular little quirk proved to be a lot more useful than trying to track down what was going on with address line A15. Let's have a look at this section of the schematic. This is a section that contains all of our RAM chips. And here's the pattern that I found. When I probed any of these RAM chips on the right hand side, that's IC6 through 13, the machine didn't crash, but when I probed any of these on the left hand side, 15 through 22, we got the crash every time. So the chips that are on the left hand side of this resistor bank seem to be related to the problem. Zooming out a little bit, we can highlight the data bus and see that it's entirely connected to the Z80 CPU, the ROM chip and the AY chip. So let's think about the ROM chip. I could replace that, and I did. It was socketed already, and we still got the same problem, so we can assume the ROM chip's good. We could try the AY chip, or we could try the Z80. And I've never had to replace an AY chip, so let's try replacing the Z80. You might notice it was already socketed when I started filming this, but I'd already socketed it. I'd already finished this line of investigation and done the work. I just wanted to show you the solution here. So here we go with a new CPU in probing around and I'm going to show you what's happening on the screen at the same time. These RAM chips are on the right hand side of the resistor bank on the schematic, no change here. 
How about these ones with the higher IC number? Yes, I can probe them now without a crash, and actually the keyboard crashing error went away as well. So our Z80 had a incredibly temperamental little issue hard to detect, which meant that it worked perfectly until there was any interference at all with the data bus, um, at least on the Z80 side of that resistor bank, and the whole thing crashed and reset. So there you go, if you are experiencing similar issues you might want to check out your Z80. In other news, who remembers this baby, the Nucleon? I built this for a customer quite a long time ago, version 2Q. Nucleon made in Czech Republic, I believe, it is a clone of the uh, Russian Pentagon, made with 512 kilobytes of RAM. Well, I've bought myself one in a lovely purple. It's the version 4A, got to assume it's the newest one, and uh, it's on its way to me now, so expect to see this appearing either in a live stream or in a new video at some point, and this may well become the new streaming workhorse. In other, other news, the next repair you're going to see from me is another toast rack which isn't booting. Well, it doesn't boot first time when it's cold, but then works when I press reset. This only happens when the machine is cold, so it seems to have a cold start problem. So if you have any ideas, comment below. Um, I have upgraded C27 to a higher capacitance, so it's nothing to do with that. And I'm now down to replacing chips, trying to find one with a weird intermittent fault. So if you've ever experienced this and you think you know what it might be, let me know please. Anyway, that's it. I'm done.